Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at the processes that we undergo in order to septate the primitive ventricle into the right and left ventricles. And then we're going to take a look at how the common outflow is separated into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. But let's start off just considering ventricular septation. And ventricular septation is actually a far simpler process than the septation that we see in the atria. So I'm going to draw um, a very simple outline of the entire fetal heart here. Okay, so here um, is the common atrium. Uh, here is the atrioventricular junction. And here is the ventricle. The ventricle, of course, has a muscular wall, and we'll depict that with this wavy line here, okay, just showing the lumen of the common ventricle. The other um, landmark I want to add on is the presence of the endocardial cushions. So the endocardial cushions I am going to just show there. So here is the endocardial cushions. And it's important that we put the endocardial cushions on because remember that both the interatrial and the interventricular septa need to fuse with the endocardial cushions in order to completely separate the heart into left and right sides and hence pulmonary and systemic circuits. Now, the interventricular septum um, is formed from two components. There is a large muscular component that grows up from the uh, ventricular wall like this. Okay, so here is the thick muscular component just here. So there is the muscular component. And as I said, most of the um, interventricular septum is formed from the muscular component. And then a small fall portion known as the uh, membranous portion grows down from the endocardial cushions. So this is the membranous component or the membranous portion. Between them, the muscular and the membranous portions form a complete interventricular septum, giving us the right and left ventricles. Now, an important thing to bear in mind is that, like with all developmental processes, things can go wrong. And it tends to be the case if something goes wrong with the process of ventricular septation, it is the membranous portion which is involved. So ventricular septal defects are most commonly um, defects within the membranous portion of the interventricular septum. So that's the relatively simple process of ventricular septation. Um, however, we need to look at the way in which the outflow tract is septated. And this is a little bit more involved, but arguably much more fascinating. When we're talking about the septation of the outflow, remember, really what we're talking about is the septation of truncus arteriosus. So if I draw the, the view that we've been drawing over and over again in this series of videos, so here are our vessels which are going to feed into the aortic arches. Here's our truncus arteriosus and our primitive ventricle with our primitive atrium just here. And what we are going to be looking at is the septation of the truncus arteriosus, essentially. Yes, this process also does involve the septation of this portion of the ventricle, but I'm not going into the detailed terminology of that because I don't think it really adds to the final message that I'm trying to get across. And the beautiful thing about this process of septation of the outflow tract is that it involves a spiral or helical septum which forms within the truncus and I can't draw that in three dimensions for you but just be aware that there is a kind of spiral septum which forms within the um, truncus arteriosus and combining that with the interventricular septum means that blood is then partitioned into um, the aorta on the left and the pulmonary arteries on the right. But I thought I'd use some diagrams to give you a much clearer representation of that. 
So looking at the top left hand diagram in pink, and we've got various stages of development. Here we're looking at a stage similar to what I just drew on the right hand side where we've got the primitive ventricle, the truncus and then those branches feeding into the aortic arches. And what we've got in the middle here that I'm highlighting is a cross section through the truncus. Okay, through the truncus arteriosus. And what we see are these ridges of tissue forming very, very similar to the endocardial cushions that we described at the atrioventricular junction. And in fact, this is cu um, cushion tissue. It's a similar tissue to the endocardial cushions themselves. But these ridges form and they are in fact part of this spiral septum. So they grow in a spiral or helical direction, separating the outflow into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. <clears throat> until ultimately the spiral septum is complete. So part E here shows us that the spiral septum is complete, separating pulmonary trunk from the aorta itself. Now, this is reflected, this arrangement is reflected in the adult. And this bottom right image, figure H, that I'm highlighting, shows the adult condition, whereby we see that the pulmonary trunk and the aorta do twist around one another. And when we see that in adult anatomy, that the pulmonary trunk and the aorta are twisted around one another, that should remind us that they were originally a single vessel, the truncus arteriosus, which became separated by a spiral or helical septum. So it really is incredibly beautiful and awe-inspiring to consider how the adult anatomy reflects the developmental processes that occurred so many years ago. I can show you the same process in a slightly different way. So at the, the bottom two images show us um, we're looking into the common ventricle here looking into the common ventricle, um, we can see the atrioventricular canals, which I'm pointing to here and here, which is where the atrioventricular valves will become um, embedded. We can see the interventricular septum in pink growing upwards, and growing downwards in pale blue is the spiral septum. And what this figure shows us very nicely is how the spiral septum will fuse with the interventricular septum and it'll all fuse together at the level of the endocardial cushions to separate the two sides of the heart completely. So that's all I wanted to talk about with regard to the ventricular septum and the spiral septum which separates the common outflow tract. Thank you very much for listening.